What's going on guys, Nathan here. Today we're gonna to talk about the seven reasons why amateurs always lose at poker. As a professional poker player, these are the seven most common mistakes that I have seen amateurs, recreational poker players making again and again. So hopefully some of these can help you out in your game. I'm gonna give you step-by-step -step example hands today showing you exactly how to fix these common mistakes. So without any further ado, let's jump into it. Counting down from seven to one, here we go. All right, guys, mistake number seven is bluffing the calling stations. Now, guys, let me break this down for you. A calling station in poker is somebody who is actually also a recreational poker player. This is somebody who plays way too many hands. They'll call you down if they hit any pair, any kind of draw at all. Heck, guys, if they've got ace high, king high, if they've got nothing at all, they're still going to call you down. They're praying that they hit that Miracle River card. I think you know the kind of player I'm talking about. And guys, we don't make money in poker by trying to bluff these players because they don't fold anything. So let me give you an example. You've got ace jack offsuit, ace of spades and jack of diamonds versus a fish, one of these calling stations. And on the river, the board reads the king of diamonds, queen of spades, seven of diamonds, four of clubs and three of hearts. Guys, in a spot like this, the 100% correct play is to just check and fold. Basically just give up. Now I know this is not what anyone wants to hear. Everyone always wants some secret strategy to check raise them on the river and represent that they hit the straight or something. Guys, this is pure insanity. This is 12th level thinking that's just gonna go completely over their head and they're just going to call you down with their ace four, with their three six, with their seven five, with their pocket twos. And what's gonna happen? Not only are you gonna lose the hand, but you're going to get frustrated why a bad player called you down all the way and then also called you on the rivers. So guys, take it from my nearly 20 years in this game. Save yourself a boatload of grief. And when you're up against one of these players who you know doesn't fold anything, just check and give up and pick a better spot. Don't try to bluff the players who never fold. All right, guys, let's move on to thing number six now, and that is calling out of position with trap hands. Now, guys, this is a massive mistake that I see still with many of my students and with amateur players all the time. Guys, let me tell you this. All poker pros know that hands like king jack queen jack ace tan i could go on and on hands like this are pure trouble we actually call these trap hands and the reason why is because you'll often hit some sort of top pair for example and you'll end up playing a big pot only to find out that they have you out kicked with a better hand let me give you an example once again you've got king jack offsuit king of hearts and jack of clubs in early position and a tag which stands for tight and aggressive player three bets you on the button now you don't need to understand all of this terminology it's not super important here basically what you need to know is a tag is a good player is not the same as the previous example tight and aggressive is the style that i teach in these videos and everything i put out because it's the best play style it's the most profitable play style in today's games so when a solid player like this three bets you and that means re-raises you on the button in a spot like this when you call you are setting yourself up for disaster so for example flop comes down with the king of spades seven of hearts and eight of diamonds guys you're just going to wind up losing a big pot here versus a hand like ace king king queen or even pocket aces or pocket kings because you need to understand guys when a tight and aggressive player three bets you before the flop that's usually one of the hands that they have so what is the lesson here guys it's to not call pre-flop three bets or re-raises especially when you're out of position like this and i should have mentioned by the way out of position means that we're going to be acting first on the flop turn and river and this is a massive disadvantage in poker guys because you don't have any information on them at all your opponent has all of the advantages in the hand they're in the driver's seat they get to see what you do first so if you're going to call re-raises with hands like this at least do it when you're in position so that you get to act last on the flop turn and river because this is statistically likely to give you a, a higher percentage chance of winning the pot but guys bottom line do not call re-raises before the flop with common trap hands like a king jack queen jack ace 10 out of position it is pure trouble it is what amateurs do and it's why they end up losing all right guys moving on to number five and that is paying off the nits now guys this is the one that drives me totally insane when i do this the nits are the tightest player at the table they're also often called a rock and i probably don't need to explain their play style too in depth to you basically they're just sitting around waiting for the nuts they're waiting for pocket aces pocket kings ace king they're trying to hit three of a kind two pair a flush a straight and so on and that's the only time they put big action into the pot 
not. They don't bluff. They're basically just sitting around and not pedaling. So let me give you an example once again. You have the old pocket cowboys, king of spades and king of diamonds, and a knit raises you on the turn of nine of diamonds, jack of spades, eight of diamonds, five of clubs. Guys, when they raise you on what I call the big money streets here, the turn and river, you can take it to the bank. They have you crushed in a spot like this. They're going to show up with either a set or two pair here or a straight literally 90% of the time. Let me give you a few example hands. They're going to show up with pocket nines, pocket jacks, pocket eights, pocket fives, or they're going to have a hand like jack nine for top two pair, queen 10 for the flop straight, nine eight for bottom two pair on the flop, on and on. Guys, bottom line, when the tightest player at the table raises you on the turn or river, they are not doing it with a one pair hand. They're doing it with one of these hands that has you absolutely crushed. And even though you have pocket kings and over pair to this board, the most profitable play here by far, any pro will tell you, is to simply lay down your hand right now and move on to the next hand. All right, guys, moving on to number four, another key strategy mistake that I see amateurs making all the time, and that is overplaying top pair. I think we've all seen this. Guys, all poker pros know to play top pair cautiously. Let me give you an example once again. You've got the old ace jack of hearts. Flop comes down with the jack of spades, nine of spades, and eight of diamonds. So a lot of amateur and beginner level players will look at this flop and they'll be pretty happy. They're like, wow, I got top pair, top kicker. This is amazing. However, guys, it's really important that you learn how to read board texture specifically on the flop in poker to understand what your opponent's range is. And that is why I would suggest making a check call in this situation instead of going for some sort of wild check raise or just blasting out for a big bet on the flop. And the reason why, guys, is because there are so many different hands that could have you crushed on this board. Let me give you a few examples. Queen 10 for the flop straight, pocket jacks for top set. Set, by the way, means three of a kind. Pocket nines for middle set, pocket tens has an open-ended straight draw on this board. Pocket eights is bottom set, jack nine is top two pair, nine eight is bottom two pair. Guys, it is really important that you're able to differentiate between a very, very well-coordinated flop like this and a dry flop like a jack five deuce. I should have also mentioned there's two spades on this board and we don't have any spades in our hands. So we're not blocking that draw. So they could have a flush draw as well, which has significant equity versus our hands. Guys, the bottom line here is when you really break down this flop, you realize that there are many, many hands that I just named that have either significant odds to win equity in the pot, or they even have you beat right now. And that is why all poker pros know to play this situation cautiously. This is not the time to go crazy. This is not the time to go all in. Yes, we have top pair, which is an excellent hand, but versus any kind of competent player, if they give us massive action in a spot like this, it's very likely that your top pair is no good. All right, guys, moving on to tip number three, and that is re-raising with ace king. This is another common spot that I see amateurs messing up all the time. So let me give you an example. Once again, this is all about flop board texture. Once again, you raise with ace king, ace of hearts, king of spades, and a knit calls you. We already talked about the knit player type. That's the tightest player at the table. Flop comes down with the queen of spades, king of clubs, and jack of diamonds. So very similar to the previous hand, guys, we have hit top pair on this board with the top kicker. However, once again, guys, this is a very action heavy board. You need to remember the player type we're up against. We're up against the knit in this example. What kind of hands do knits like to play? They like to play hands with a queen in them, with a king in them, with a jack in them, with an ace and a 10 in them. I think you get the idea, guys. There is a very good chance that this player has absolutely smashed this flop. And that's why you should be playing cautiously in this situation, because there are so many hands that this player can have that have us absolutely crushed. For example, pocket kings, pocket queens, pocket jacks, all hit a set, of course, on this board. Ace-10 flop the straight. King-Queen has top two pair. King-Jack has top and bottom pair. Queen-Jack has bottom pair. 10-9 also flop the straight. Guys, once again, it is very important for your poker success to understand the player type you're up against in each hand and also how to read the flop board texture. In a situation like this, we do have a very solid hand with top pair, top kicker, but this is the kind of board that can get you in all sorts of trouble if you choose to play a massive pot versus the tightest player at the table. 
All right, guys, moving on to thing number two that holds so many amateurs back, and that is playing in bad poker games. Guys, I have talked about this one so many times on the channel. I personally will not play in a poker game unless there is one clear recreational player at the table. I put an image of my online poker table here. You can see the player in blue is playing a crazy 55% of their hands. This is a guaranteed crazy fish amateur player. This is the kind of player we make the money against in poker. And guys, I always point out if making money money in poker is your goal and I'm assuming it probably is if you choose to click on a video like this this is absolutely the number one way to win at poker well, I can teach you all of the strategy in the world to play your ace king better but if you're not playing against the kind of players who play crappy hands who chase every draw who will call you down with bottom pair you're never gonna win a big amount in poker guys because poker is a game that is played between people and your results are always going to be in direct correlation to who you choose to to play against so as i always say choose wisely all right guys and my number one reason why amateurs always lose at poker and we see this time and time again is getting upset over every single bad beat guys if i had a dime for how many bad beat stories i have been told over the years by amateurs i would be a very rich man by now guys all poker pros understand the math in this game i call it the fish tax this is the tax that we all need to pay to the fish side sometimes when they hit their lucky card on the river against you because they always have a shot that's why the game of poker is so profitable that's why there's nowhere near as much money in a game like chess for example where there is almost no element of luck at all the reason why we have million dollar 10 million dollar tournaments in poker is because this element of luck draws the bad players in to keep coming back for more and more which brings the money into the game which fuels your profits so guys let me give you an example you You've got two red aces, pocket aces, best hand ever created. Even if you go all in pre-flop and a fish calls you at pocket sevens, they're going to win the hand close to 20% of the time. Guys, this is not a trivial amount. And once again, this is what keeps them coming back for more. You need to make peace with this. The worst thing you can do is get upset about individual hands like this and claim that the site is rigged and you're completely cursed in poker. Guys, when stuff like this happens, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the game. It doesn't mean you have bad luck. As I just discussed, it's actually just math. All right, guys, I hope this one was helpful. Like and subscribe if you found this video useful. And also, if you want to know my entire strategy to crush the small and mid stakes games, make sure you grab a copy of my free poker cheat sheet. That'll be the top link in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. All the best at the poker tables, unless you're on mine.